Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our meeting of the Human Services Commission. I'd like everybody to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our flag is here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Thank you. And let's take a moment, please. We'll go around the room and do a quick roll call. Laura Inserto, Chair of the Human Services Commission. Suzanne Tassani, Vice Chair of the Human Services Commission. Sheila Tessi, Recording Secretary. Joe Krejci, Secretary. Carolyn Gerrigan, Commissioner. The Reverend Jane Commissioner. Gwen Favre. That's Harris. <laughs> Julie, okay. Julie Marco, can you okay. 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 Excellent, thank you. Um, we're just going to ask you please to review our mission statement. Um, we figured we read it enough, so it's indelible now in our hearts and minds. So um, if um, anybody would like to take a moment, please do so. But I don't want to delay introducing our kind speaker for today. Beth Harris, Director of the Mather Senior Center in Darien, and Southwestern Regional Representative to the State Task Force on Senior Centers, has graciously offered to speak with us today. And I'm sure that whatever information you impart on us is information we do not know about. So thank you, Beth. It's good to see you. And um, we'll save questions for after what you have to say. Sure. And thank you. You're Thanks for the well. opportunity. And I'm sure because, Julie, that you know some of this um, all, as it's been happening along the way. But basically the task force was, there was a task force in 2016 that studied senior centers and studied our efficiency and our service to all of our communities and started to decide that we're not well known enough. What we do isn't well known enough. Uh, we're not represented enough in terms of state uh, interaction and interventions of all the things that we do do. Um, that led to this act that Julie just passed out to you. If you which, didn't pick it up, there's one on the table. Which established a senior center working group. And uh, there were 13 people that were uh, recommended by either their state rep or a senator or someone or their town, uh, someone on the town official or an a ARP rep to be on uh, and then to be ratified to be a representative of, of the various counties. So I'm the Fairfield County rep. Uh, very happy and pleased to represent 14 of the most amazing senior centers across the state. I can say that now because there's 169 of us and I've been on the uh, senior center working group since uh, 2021. Uh, in November, we started. October, we were supposed to start. We weren't that late. It was only supposed to be for 18 months. They're talking about extending it right now. And the reason they're talking about extending it is because the field representative, one of the things that came out of a need for at the state level, that there needed to be a senior center liaison that would represent all of us, actually be somebody who would do a little public relations work for us as well, coordinate us from the standpoint of being able to um, work on the modernization of what we do uh, and letting our communities understand what we do. Uh, and if you go across the states, even the 14 of us, we culturally work with the residents of our town and what our political systems are, but we also work with what the needs and the wants of the seniors in our locations are. So we, we all operate a little bit differently as well. So the idea was the senior center liaison would be the person that would also at the state level have the state look at it budgeting us some of the money that, like right now, the $10 million that just came from ARPA funding that, Julie, do you know? Do yeah. they know? Oh, yeah, I know. About that. That. Okay, that comes so up. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> I won't tell you. The allocation's out, so I'll let Julie give you the good news. What's ARPA? Um, American Rescue Plan. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So senior centers were given ten million dollars oh. across the United across Connecticut and the United States actually. Uh, and we there's a beneficiary uh, application, and each town was allocated a certain amount of money based on their senior population, uh, diversity in the town, 
and uh, income. So that money, as Julie's going to tell you that good news later, but that was part of what we worked on. We were the advocates for that. Then the five new field representatives that are going to be hired at the state level, one is going to be the senior center liaison. So that gal or or gentleman um, will be the person that actually gets to know all of us and hear what our needs are on a financial level as well without, we hope, instituting any mandates. One of the issues across the state is there's a different... um, there's different levels of education of senior center directors. There's different staffing for senior centers. There's different models of what we get to use as edifices and buildings. There's different coordinations of whether human services in charge of the senior center and where that is. There are are other parks and rec or freestanding as I am. So what's working, what's not working, how should we coordinate this? What are best practices? Uh, Can we share those best practices and communicate with each other? Over COVID, one of the fantastic things that happened for us is our area agency on aging, uh, led by Maria Allen, coordinated all of us, all the directors. We met every Wednesday, and we helped each other with uh, distribution of food, grab-and-go activities. We shared all of our activities, and then we shared what we were doing virtually so people from various 14 towns could participate at all of our senior centers. So, and then we got to know each other even better than we had before because we were meeting under such circumstances. And many of those meetings, Julie, right, went a few hours yes. um, um, every single week, every mm-hmm. single Wednesday. And we were very happy that we ended up tasking that into what people were doing program, program-wise, what people were doing monetarily, what people were doing with food. Um, so we, I think we showed the rest of the state how to do it right. And one of the reasons for that is that because we have, in my opinion at this point, a superior area agency on aging. So we all, we're always very connected to our our area agency on aging and we are very fortunate all to be professionally run. I don't think we have a senior center in our 14 town area that doesn't either have a master's degree social worker or somebody, a gerontologist, somebody who's a professional in the field of aging. But we are all um, I would say, tasks different with um, uh, the amount of staff we have and how we run. So one of the things that I brought with me today, and then I'll be quiet, because Julie knows I can talk and talk 15 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> not this um, is actually a draft, which I got permission to share with all of our recommendations thus far. We're not done yet, um, so there's more recommendations to come, and this is going to be refined. So this is the culmination of 18 months of work so even though it was really just the field rep that we were working on and that and getting that job description down to what the other senior centers needed and all of the ways that we operate, we had a lot of recommendations that are going to go to the Department on Aging, but also to the Commission, and I always have to look at this because there's just too many letters in this, the, the Commission of Women, Children, Seniors, and Equity and Opportunity. They were also one of the coordinating uh, meeting uh, uh, liaisons for us. So we met with other state agencies through them, and they've done a lot of coordination for us to be able to put even this document together. So I'm not going to read it all to you, but just to, to tell you that uh, you know establishing a statewide senior center advisory group is now what they're looking at. So we'll go from a working group to an advisory group. So when this new person is hired, They'll have professionals, again, represented throughout all of of the state of Connecticut to help advise them how to proceed. And then there'll be that, that whoever the rep may not be me, could be Julie that gets chosen. But whoever volunteers, is that what it is? Well, uh, we're paid, no, we're, we're basically paid acting professionals so that we're taking time out of our schedule. So generally this meeting is on Fridays from 10 to 12 or Fridays from 2 to 4. So I, I think they'll continue to do that. Um, so not paid um, by the state. Right, right, state right. State exactly. State. We're giving our professional right. uh, expertise, but we're, we're active professionals working in the field. And that's really important at this particular point in time to have people that are in the trenches because that's what they're trying to do, make things more efficient. So they're, they're going to come to the people that are actually doing the work. So this is a new thing that they're talking about developing that came out of this. And that... Um, we're, besides senior center directors, there'll be other people in the field of aging, probably municipal agents as well, 
or other people from the other departments in the state that have a stake in senior uh, quality of life issues. So people from livable communities, which would be people that are advocating for folks with Alzheimer's disease, um, you know, multi-integration in senior centers and community centers for people of all needs, quality of life issues from our age of 55 to 100 or over, 100 plus, because some of us have folks in our centers that are well at close to approaching that age or in their 90s. Um, so it's not just going to be about quality of life issues that are for a specific age. It's decades of, of seniors. And then also how the towns themselves are running. The other big thing that came out of this was the difference between rural and urban equity and sociographics and equity and resources and locations. So that if there was money that the state was going to put aside for senior issues related to senior centers every single year, those they would really have to be looking at the needs of those demographics that way because it's extremely different to be in a rural setting than it is to be in an urban setting than it is to be in a suburban setting. So that has to be established too. Um, and then they want to have a summit every year. This is after Massachusetts. Massachusetts is the state that is to everybody wants to emulate. We've met with them a few times. They had it all going on. Uh, I'd love to, if they have their conference in person, yeah. we should really go. They've got it. They've got it because they basically, the money that funnels through all of their municipalities, they do this already. They see the importance of quality of life issues. They see the importance of um, sustaining seniors in the community as opposed to warehousing people uh, and keeping them active and involved and using people as resources because that's another big one here volunteerism and using the quality and caliber of people that exist that still want to work and can work for, for free uh, from the standpoint but have all this intrinsic knowledge. I plan on doing that when I retire um, at a nursing home level actually. So, you know, that kind of thing, to, to cultivate that more. So there's more than this. There's a lot of initiatives if I went through all of them, but you would be very proud that we were well representative and that we really did work hard. It was amazing for me to actually see, and sometimes I was a state worker for a few years, and eh, so, but so it was nice to see this energy and this commitment from everybody across the state. And though COVID did a lot to kind of smack us around, it also did a lot to energize us and to try to make us better and to get, provide better services. And the, one of the key things is the mental isolation that happened during COVID was more devastating than just about anything else. So we're trying this initiative, even with the ARPA fund, that when we, there's two things that people don't like to hear, the modernization of senior centers, that really relates to the technical ability. We really know that we could have another pandemic. We need to get everyone as technically savvy as we possibly can. There needs to be a lot of education. We need our senior centers to be enough modernized to be able to handle that, you know, virtual program, programming, live streaming, so people that are at home can ask real-time questions if there's a health uh, professional there or some kind of lecture series or emergency management, that kind of thing. So we're, we're, we want everybody to work on that as well. But we really want to get people to understand that this is a safe haven and a place, a general clearinghouse for information. Because what we found the most important thing is when there's an emergency, when people have one number to call and one place to be and one resource, it makes everybody a lot more comfortable. And since senior centers were already doing that without the reputation for it, even our public health departments saw how vitally important we were during this time. We want to be able to be able to be accessed that way. So we want to be advertised as well that way. So we want to kind of shape ourselves up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But we want to really, really look at getting people back out, getting them re-engaged in the community so that they have a better quality of life. Because you can have a quality of life even when you're not so... I love the Living Well community. Have you gone to any of those no. meetings yet? They're all, that's my, was my specialty was dementia care. I worked with cognitive impaired people most of my career. And the fact that they're trying to make livable communities that allow people that have that diagnosis as long as they possibly can be to be at home okay. and to be within the community. And it's a fascinating endeavor. They just started, um, of course, near and dear to my heart. But that's the whole thing, 
home is always where the heart is, but we have to make it possible, we have to make it affordable, and we have to make it manageable because generally when people have needs and they're older, their children are older. So if you have a 91-year-old that you're responsible for that you're taking care of and you're in your late 60s or 70s, you need a little bit more support to do that. So even though we're aging a lot better than we were, I can remember when I first started when I was a young chicken, if I met somebody in their 80s that had dementia, it usually was a result of a heart surgery or some other kind of a stroke because you heard of stroke. There weren't statin drugs. There weren't all the high blood pressure meds there are now. So we have this chance to live a lot more longer and a lot more in, in a vital way. 80s to 60, Yeah. Well, we like to see that with many people, but it, but there's yeah. a. So we want. So if that's the charge, we want to live with a better quality of life for a lot longer, and we want to be able to support each other. So. Beth, is there a website that you have that we can read all this? Well, they once this gets once it's not a draft anymore, then it then it'll be open for everybody to look at. I'm not even supposed to do this, but I got I got permission <laughs> uh, because I told I actually told them how important it is that people see what this is really happening. We did all this work, so there's going to be more that comes just from this, and this is also the expectation of the field rep. So it's good for us to know that we're going to be able to have somebody that we can go to and we can highlight our programs. You know, if they do make that state, there's, there's going to be a state website that will be a senior center online. This is what the, one of the things that they're supposed to do. And if Julie's running a program here and it's a program that would benefit anybody else in the state, it's going to go so people can watch it in real time on the computer then so people can join. So, um, you know, that's a very, it's very, very exciting. And also, there's going to be, like, advertisements on News 12, 8, 3, that will say, go to your local senior center, and they'll be generic, but you might see pictures of Brenda right. or your, your place people, with people playing pickleball. So we're all going to be represented, and that's really important for your community to see. So, you know, because they have to know how, how vital you are. So, And you have one of the best seniors that you would definitely have – one of the best directors, and, right. and, you know and I have to say, I, you know, I will tell you, top three, we're, we won't say who's the top three, but we're all, we're <laughs> we within, think we are. we're all the, yeah. within the top three. <laughs> but we have, you know, and this is my, I live here, so, um, yeah, this is my town, so I know a lot about Fairfield as well, um, but, you know, it's just that we have, we have a competitive edge to be collaborative and to be the best, right. and Fairfield County is, mm. so. All right, so you can you can have those. Thanks. Anybody have questions for Beth? I can share. Them. You can share those, yeah. I do. Were they looking at possibly making it uniform what the beginning age would be for a senior center? Because during my time at the Greenwich Senior Center, it was 55 and up. I know here it's different, and I think they raised it after I retired. 50 a year. Did they look at what ended? Up, depending on I think what age? ended up happening was ARP is the benchmark. So ARP kept lowering the, the age, mm -hmm. and I think that's why the senior centers themselves have lowered their ages as well, uh, because of what's accessible, and if people did need supportive services in any way because they had other, they needed eligibility programs or other kinds of issues like that, they wanted to make sure the center was going to be accessible that way. Realistically, I don't know what the demographic is here, but like at mine, People that use the center every day on average are between the ages of 72 and 74. People who stay at the senior center all the day are the ages between 88 and 95. Yeah, yeah. People that come in for caregiver support are generally in their 50s. Uh, so it, you know, so that's that's why you sort of want that umbrella because you are serving at least four decades. But there's sometimes there's confusion out in the community as to who's a senior, what year they become a senior. You know, that kind of thing. There's confusion about that. I hear it all the time. Well, it's, I mean, in terms of the services that are offered, I think, you know, the retirement age is still, in terms of getting everything, yeah. mostly actually goes up and up and up. Right. Yeah, now it's 67 and three months, depending on how old you are. Uh, but, um, you know, I think there's a benchmark for certain things that you become eligible for. Um, there also is a push now not to call anybody a senior. Yeah. Did you, did you know on that thing? Yeah. Or not on well, I was going to ask you that. Like, is there any kind of initiative to change that whole word for well, identifying? There is, 
but it's a shame because in every other facet of the world, the senior is a thing to achieve. So that's our problem as far as I'm concerned. They are using the word older adult or much older adult or an older, older adult. I don't know how that, I don't know how that's better. I think that's all about us changing the image, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I don't have a thing about being a senior. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe one of those ads could be a senior with, with a 65 right. date. Well, they're, what they're going to do, and, and we started with some of the, we actually start doing some of these commercials, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to see the best commercials. Did you see any of those? They're young people, yes. and they ask the young people, did you see those? I, I saw they're, one. Oh, they're hysterical. So it's a young person who's, I don't know, 28, 30, somewhere in there. looks like they're 12, of course. And they say to them, what do you think about when you think of older adults? And there were walkers, wheelchairs, diapers, whatever, the whole nine yards. <laughs> so then they end up meeting a, a kickboxer who's 65 years old who kicks the crap out of them. Excuse me. So and, then, so, and then they meet an artist who's 82 years old who's making these beautiful kids. So they're all different, all different young people all different older people, breaking the image. Then they interview the younger people after, and the younger people are so relieved to have met these dynamic older people and to see what quality of life issues are. They, they, they stretch their idea of ageism, what ageism is. Because not for nothing, I've met old people at 25 years old. I wouldn't want to be around them, toxic people. And I've met people that are in their 90s that are simply ageless. Yeah, exactly. That's up to us to change. It is. So this edifice gets old. It's only a, it's only a cargo ship. <laughs> Who you are is inside glowing. Mm -hmm. You just have to you have to. So that's what the that's what the advertisements are. So those are kind of the things that they're shooting for. It's going to be really cool. So. Can so, I just follow up? With Loretta, you? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Loretta had a question. I just want to say that I recognize that. In, on your list of recommendations that uh, directly the segment ageism is included. Right. So that's terrific. Right. And we need we really need to do that. So who did this this um, commercial you're talking about? The, the it, it, it was a um, an agency that they hired that actually was an advertising firm. So that they they picked an advertising firm that they would do it with, and um, but they haven't been chosen as the finalists. But the but, they, which the they? Oh, the funding? Department on Aging. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, the Department on Aging. And yeah. And they have the funding yeah. to do such. Uh, they had yes. Yeah. They used it. They used seed money. No, what they did was they asked this advertising agency to make an advertisement that they would consider, and the agency was very smart. Charged them nothing. Wow. Okay, because they want the business. So and and there was a, basically a little uh, competition among them. So I don't know who they're going to choose. So I don't want to say. No, that's not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of the great. I just want to follow the vote on this idea because uh, I think that the problem, if I may, with the senior center, now we're supposedly we're trying to appeal to the 55 to 65 year olds. These are people who, by and large, are not retired. They're working. They're working. <laughs> Facilities here, and I'm wondering if this is generally among senior centers, right. are they typically just open during the week? Uh, if they are, then they really are not accessible to, like I know myself, I worked in New York for years. I would come home, I, I didn't come here until I retired, okay? Um, so even though I could have come here at 55, I, there was nothing here that, well, I couldn't come because the place wasn't open. Right. So I'm just wondering, as part of what you're considering, is it something to maybe expand uh, the accessibility, maybe having something on Saturdays for uh, people who work in New York to play, not play pickleball, but even have, we have a great lifelong learners program, for example, here. It's during the week. And so is it stuff like that that your task force is considering that to attract the 62-year-olds, or even the 65-year-olds, because 65-year-olds, I was still working at 65. So, I mean, I don't mean to say that 65 will say you retire and then you can come here. I think it's going to go creeping up till 70 and perhaps even later than that. So I'm just wondering if that's part of the consideration to maybe not just think of people who are retired and come here on a Tuesday afternoon, but how do you get those people who are working? Right. So one of the things that, yes, that's absolutely, they're talking about other hours, extended hours. One of the things is the changing the model that all the senior centers become community centers. 
So in the evening, they are open, and Parks and Rec's running them or somebody else is running them, so you have active programs in the evening that would bring in that age group, not necessarily would they have to be coming to the senior center. You can do things like I do caregiver support education programs that I do in the evening, early evening, when people get off the train, we have a light supper, and mm -hmm. we do a four-part caregiver series. Um, you know, in uh, Westport, what they're doing already is they have a friends of, and every Sunday they're open, a band and entertainment or something that people can go in. There's a lot of ideas being floated like that. Now, one of the things is the change of the model and the reorganization. A lot of people are looking at that as well. Because here's the thing. Are you, your town, this town, my town, going to hire more full-time people and pay benefits packages? Probably not. So you're going to have to find another way of doing it because everything costs money. So if there's a synergy, right now my, my place, Mather Center, at night, I, we're – Darian's a little different. They, they roll up the sidewalks usually around 2.30, 3 o'clock. And if they're going to do something else, they go to the library or somewhere else in the evening. So my hours are 8 to 3. My building closes at 3 for 3.30 because it resets for parks and recreation, for the Darian Arts, for other users that are community users, not private users, community. Still because you're all in the same building. Well, we let Area. them use the yeah. building. We yeah. let them utilize the building. So but it's the way that... But the pro I have a problem with that because does that get identified as a senior center activity or a community? No, it's a, no, the, it's, a, it's a Parks and Rec activity or a Dairy and Arts activity in the Mather Center. So the Mather Center becomes a box that is I use during the day for a period of time so and then Parks right. and Rec uses it Darian Arts uses it. Those groups don't use, use that box. So the box is not the issue anymore. It's actually what happens inside the box. Okay, but again, I think you lose some of the um, value of it being a senior center where you were trying to attract 55-year-olds to get engaged with the senior center if they think, well, it's not really the senior center, it's the community center or it's the arts center. My experience is that there's no 55-year-old that wants to be engaged in a senior yeah. center. That's my, that's well, my experience. Uh, that's going to be my other question. But why should, but my thing is, is that the 55-year-old, it's not realistic. The 55-year-old, in my opinion, comes to the senior center for services, they're for caregivers, for information and referral. They don't really come to a senior center unless they're a disabled person, that's a different story, for socialization and for community and for that kind of interaction. They're still going everything that's happening all over town. So, so I don't think you have to, I don't think it's our mission the way you're saying it's our well, mission. I, it was. I, mean, I think to Joe's point, yeah, so I agree completely with you guys in terms of coming to hang out and spend time in the senior center. You're not going to catch that population. But was it last month or was it two months ago? I went looking through trying to find in, the, in our courses here, is there a, a yoga or a Pilates class that I can take? And they're all right in the middle of the day. And I work from home and right. I'm in town. And I still couldn't do that. I could come, you know, give me first thing in the morning or the very end of the day and I could try and make it work. But I'm not going to come to a 12 o'clock class. Right. And I'm that, I'm that population. So you, need to, so you need to find, again, 55-year-olds are not restricted from coming to even, even evening recreation programs. You need to go to your, look in your parks and rec schedule, and you have the, if you have the program here, then it's within this, that people are getting introduced to the building as more than just an operational building that runs from this time to this time. There's no war between parks and rec and the senior no, center. No, no. We are all, we're all one from the standpoint of that, right. so as a resource. Well, the other thing is, before you were, we were on the commission prior to COVID, we were open Thursdays and Saturdays. We found that 11 people would come Saturday. We were stacking the building for 11 no. people. is not a good use of time. Okay. And then Great Thursday time. nights, okay. yeah, Thursday right. nights we were open for a program with the friends. We had a dinner. We had pickleball. We had... Um, lectures. Yeah, we did. We had lectures and programs, mm -hmm. music, and the wood shop open, and card games, and that worked pre-COVID. Um, weekends didn't work. People were busy doing other things. So, you know, we at some point we will get back to that, but um, I'm not sure about the weekends. That was that was hard mm -hmm. because you know now that Brenda's full time, there's a little bit more flexibility. But if I worked on a Saturday, that meant I was off a day during the week, and that's mm -hmm. prime programming time. Mm -hmm. But I can't. The target has to be. It has to be the collaboration group. to what you're saying. Right. Like, I think young people would be looking for options. 
not necessarily senior center right. options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You know, my husband won't slow down in the parking lot. He's 63. He will not slow down. He's dropping me off. He's like, go. He's not going to come. There's, no. there's a certain yeah, person who's going to go to the library for a program. Yeah, no, but I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we have to change our... Right. We're not failing because 55 are, are coming in. Right now. We're, we're, like, for instance, before I left, I was talking to a son that was in New Jersey. His mom and dad are in Darien. And, you know, they're of a certain age, and he's in his 50s. He needs me desperately right now mm -hmm. for the problems that are happening with and I'm helping him. Mm -hmm. So he's coming to the senior center on Thursday to see me in his desperation. So that's the whole thing. Do you have the services available for the people at that age? I'm hopefully going to retire in a couple of years. I'm going to audit classes at Sacred Heart and Fairfield Union. That's what I want to do. So I'm not coming here either. So, <laughs> and that, no, no, but I, you know, but, but what, I, what I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying is, you're looking you know, for something else. I'm looking, or I'm, or I'm going to contract and work in all the assisted livings and run programs because that's what I love to do. So it's like, you know, we're not supposed to be a one size fits all. We're supposed to be available to do as many things. And when people, I'm sure the same thing. If you talk to Brenda, for instance. Three gentlemen just came today from the Darien Men's Association. They want ping pong. I don't have ping pong. I'm going to buy three ping pong tables. We figured out how we're going to do it. They're going to be totally responsible for the opening and the closing of the ping pong tables. I have a space. I have a room. I have money in a memorial fund that I can buy them. I did not say no. I said, yippee, come on. That's the point. You have to have a, somebody, and you do, that's responsive to what the community is asking for at the time. Everybody's pickleball nuts. Right. You know, I, so that started for me in 2009 in Darien. There was no pickleball. So that's, you have to respond to your community. But if you have a need, especially the caregiver course, mm -hmm. I usually do that twice a year through the Alzheimer's Association. It's packed. And it's all, actually, there's 45-year-olds, 42-year-olds, mm -hmm. younger people in who are really concerned about their moms and dads or, or, their, their, own. or their grandparents oh. or, what, you know, whatever in terms of planning. Mm -hmm. So we just have to be responsive mm -hmm. to what our community is asking us to do. Excellent. Anybody else? I would think that there is a need for a daycare here for... Um, for people who have Alzheimer's or, and, you know, just beginning stages. Because I have a neighbor who is, and um, I'm not sure where she goes, but her husband takes her. And this is so convenient compared to, you know, like, I don't know, for some reason I think he goes to Bridgeport with her. It's Jewish Senior Services has one. Oh, then that would be it. Yeah. And, um, and I know they, they can't come here, but it would be so good to have something local. Because I think this is a big issue. Yeah, well, get me started. I came from the Baldwin Center in 25 years. I ran a social model adult day program that was jamming. And they closed it. Short sighted. Oh, it's a very, very different program. Yeah, so. short and you, but what you you can do it at every senior center, but you have to have an identified space, and then you have to have areas that are collaborative. So. For instance, in mine, my mine opened up into the program, into the entertainment hall, but my lunches were brought into the room, and people were there from nine to three, five days a week, yeah. all from lower, from higher uh, cognitive impairment to lower cognitive impairment, and it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. But your your space has to be set Could up. Could even for be it. a revenue source. Well, we it, did coordinate with Jewish Senior Services yeah. pre-COVID, sadly. Their memory loss program was down the hallway, and they would participate in classes and movies and lunch, and they were supervised by that program and participating in this program, but their funding has changed. So what they'll do is like a six-week program at different sites around, and that, that's what's working for them. And they're the experts. So Right. And livable cool. communities are pushing for that. Did you find a, a, a demand in our area when um, you had that class? There were no. No, but they yeah. have their day program is very full, and their the early memory one they try to run as a um, almost like a, a course because people you know people were at diff much different levels they wanted to learn as much as they could do to posit to positively impact their health okay. and their memories, um, and it, it wasn't it wasn't huge but it was it was a start and then COVID hit yeah yeah of course. 
Mm -hmm. They right up. It did. It did. It, it, mm -hmm. They pulled it. it. So they're restarting it differently. Yeah. And that's what the fund is. It's still a need so I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. two of my neighbors, actually. Mm, that's a heartbreak. See, but then it goes back to the perception, too. And yes. that's what's so complicated. That's right. Because even someone in their 70s does not want to come to a place where people, that's not me, right. I don't want to be involved with that, I'm coming to the yoga, and it's depressing, and yeah. you know, um, yeah. I have a mother in law who's 96, but cognitively right there, mm -hmm. and she goes in Florida to a, um, it's a Jewish family service, wonderful program in Delray mm -hmm. Beach. We had a hard sell to get her to go because she goes, I don't need that yet. That's daycare. It's been years too. And she, it isn't. It's just programming. But we had to really force her to go at first. I think that's a lot. Now of she loves it. But here she's 96, doesn't feel she needs it. Right. <laughs> oh, you know. She doesn't want to be with old people. Exactly. Exactly. I hear that all the time. Right. So, right. You know, that's the problem. Yeah. If you're trying and, you know, and you realize in Fairford there are so many senior citizens. There's a large majority, and how many of that majority are really coming here? I don't know. Well, the members. Ten percent. Ten percent members. It's a ten percent. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Not active, but you know, members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But as Beth said, we can't be everything to everybody. Right. The town has so much to offer. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, Beth. You're welcome. Lots of information. Have to think about. I mean, great speaker. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hit the road. All right. Yeah. You can take a little meeting if you want, or you can. I can stay for your meeting if you'd like. Because I want to talk to you a little bit after. So. All right. So, um, I'd like to gain an approval of minutes. Um, from our last month's meeting. I actually had two things that I picked up. Um, Mary Ellen Gavin was not actually present last month, so, that I recall. Nope. So she was um, reflected as present. So if you want to change that, that'd be great. And then where it says under Carolyn reports, um, numbers have remained the same, I believe, is the um, wording. I think we just might want to be specific about what numbers, like flu people, COVID, you know, I mean, that, that's the only thing, you know, should we be a little bit more specific right. about the numbers? Well, that's because they weren't specific. I can't be specific. Can't be. Well, you did, you weren't, though. I think you said COVID. Oh, was COVID, COVID numbers. Yeah. COVID. So it's just the way they were reflected yeah, in the Just numbers about COVID. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah. I was being technical. Right. Anybody else have anything to report? I do. So under commissioners present, Marty Schwartz is the disability commission liaison. He's one of our commissioners. Okay. Sorry about that. Liaison. Thank you. Anything else that anyone picked up on? Um, All right. Okay. If nothing else, then I'd like to ask for a motion to vote on last month's minutes. I shall make that motion, Madam Chairman. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, on to old business, Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got those numbers. No, no, they're right. <laughs> no, the focus is now on other things in the health department, and that happens to include right now <clears throat> um, getting people to uh, go out and do more work in terms of restaurants and things like that. That's what they're uh, working on now, to get more people inspecting. Oh, inspectors. Yeah, kind of thing mm -hmm. up to date, but specifically for seniors, no, not to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Have there been incidences, uh, incidences of people being, they get sick or something? Is that why? I don't think so. I think basically because the restaurant business is starting to come back up again, and there's more and more people, and they just don't seem to have quite enough that they're comfortable with. So that's what they're trying to do now. Hmm. Anything else? No, they just they had a couple of people with um, problems like hoarding, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. They're kind of concentrating more on than they did before. Good. Yeah. That's a real tough one. It really is. Especially when they hoard animals. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Excellent.
And I guess we already... It's really weird, though, because the Board of Health meets the first of the month. We meet the end of the month. And right. I try to call, and I don't know who's getting on time to see if there's been an update. Okay. I tried to do that in the Wednesday and Thursday before I come. But uh, there was a time to come up with it. Yeah, it's a three-week uh, Yeah, it's a three-week uh, change. Tell them to change their timing to yeah, ours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate everything. Day before. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Carolyn. We really appreciate you going and, and giving us these reports. Uh, Marty, I guess, is entertaining his grandchildren. Yep. Good for him. So uh, Julie's going to provide us with Marty's report. Yep. So the commission has not met again since we last met. So the only update is um, planning for the next meeting, which is um, uh, March 14th. And um, the RTM subcommittee on senior tax and senior and disabled tax relief will come. And um, they are working with Sacred Heart on a survey for um, the town to assess, you know, do like a needs assessment for the town and also a business assessment for which businesses are um, disability friendly. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, right. 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 I'm sorry. With all these proposals that the governor is coming up with for income tax, do they work at all? They, yeah, you know, they, you probably remember this committee, this subcommittee from RTM has been meeting for a really long time. And last year, the Board of Finance ended that work and now they're taking it up again. So they have to take into account all of that. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, I can do friends up to Sure, that'd be great. Um, the friends has a new board, they have a new treasurer, um, they ran a um, oh, they're running the St. Patrick's Day activity. What is that? So, if anyone here wants to attend, um, it's in the newsletter. Okay. It's, um, oh, I have it. Yeah. yeah, they're having the Irish dancers come and doing something dessert-y. If, if anybody can show up, it's always nice. They love to see someone from the commission. Mm -hmm. I'm going to personally be away to wedding, but it'd be on the 16th. I think it's the 17th. It's on the 17th. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, yeah. Um, Just grab a newsletter on your way because it yeah. has a whole write-up and everything. Yeah. Eleven o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Um. And they. Yep. Okay. So that's right. Yep. That's it. So they have a new board, new treasurer, mm -hmm. and um, I personally am serving on a committee for a fundraising event they're going to hold in September, September twenty-first. Put it on your calendar. It's going to be a wine tasting at the Jackie Durrell Pavilion, and this committee is really putting out all the stuff to make it a lovely event and it's to raise money for the senior center. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'll go back to you. I will be, be awesome. happy to do that. I don't put your name in the hat. You got it. Um, but yeah, they, they had a meeting this past week that I wasn't able to attend, but I'll update you next month as to where they're at on that. They are looking for sponsors though, so if you can think of a company or uh, you know somebody that you think would like to be a sponsor, there's three levels, and um, it would be nice, really. Mm -hmm. You can reach out to me, Julie, or someone on the friends with that. Okay, new business. Um, just a couple things I had. Um, I, I received Brenda Cupchick's email last night. There is budget formation for the town. And of course, I reviewed Senior Center. Um, Julie did a great job putting that together. Doesn't look like she's asking for a lot of new funding, um, which I expected because we're a very conservative approach, I think, in Fairfield to asking for money. But as a commission, because we are a faction to give advisement, you know, help with policy. If there are things that you would like Julie to focus on or consider, now is the time. Right, Julie? Really? Yeah, it's too late. Yep. Well, the budget's operational. Well, no, the budget's operational, so that's that's not really a commission um, influence unless there's a policy you want to get. Yeah, that's that's right. Well, but the budget has input, perhaps. Yeah. That would be nice. Not really the role of the commission. No. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the so coming around is our budget. Oh really? Oh, cool, Joe. I didn't even know that was on your. Um, Lady. 
Can we do one at a time, please? Thank you. Um, okay, so that was, I just wanted to say great job. Um, I'm actually attending tonight the Penfield Pavilion meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So they see what's school. happening there. Well, they're going to discuss where the Penfield Pavilion yeah. is at. Because you know, the I changed over to the town, and then it was last year in the Penfield Pavilion. Mm -hmm. So now they're moving in the spring to Jackie uh, Durrell. But the problem is, if it rains, you can't go inside. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher, Maggie Taylor, is having a big freak out. Like, why can't we go to Penfield if nothing's happening there, mm -hmm. you know? So just pay, think about that too. That yeah. she, she had yoga there every day during the spring on the pavilion outside. And she's from the senior center. She's yeah. no, oh. but she's for through the town parts and rest. Oh, I see. Okay, she's yeah. Great. She is great. Yeah. yeah, I take her twice a week, but as I said, you know, she keeps saying what's happening with the event. Well, she should go tonight. Hopefully, she'll be there. If anyone's interested in going to that, six o'clock. Yeah. And um, member directory, I dealt with Sheila on, and we're going to probably be uh, giving you a member, a new updated member directory within the next 30 days at our next meeting. Um, I was on a Zoom call yesterday on 840G, if you recall from last month, the things that occurred in yeah, 830G. And, um, Only people that were registered and attended will be receiving the recording. But if anybody here wants it, I'm happy to forward it to you. It was an, it was an hour long meeting. Were you wanted to? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't Would like that the recording. I, want, I, I, had, I, had. I had another function. Yeah. Um, I registered for it, but I didn't know. But I'm wondering if I can get, if I get the recording, I'd love to. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll send it to everybody. Why don't I just send yeah, it to you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Julie, for sending that around. Yeah. I really yeah. Look, I'm sorry I didn't make it so quick. Go ahead and with your refresh that they did a good job. Was it good? I don't ever, you know, put any information down because information is wealth, right? But uh, I didn't get anything new out of it. We're lucky because the senior advocates is so um, great about informing us. Yeah. So not a, not right. a lot new, but a good presentation. Yeah. 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 I thought, you know what, it is what it is. I and there wasn't a lot of um, outside questioning and involvement. It was more like we were spoken to, which I think these kinds of things are more beneficial when you're able to ask questions and gain, you know, personal knowledge. Yeah. What did you think? I thought there were some good myth busting. Mm -hmm. That there's that there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of misinformation out there about mm -hmm. the and I thought that they did a good job keeping it factual. And though we weren't able to interactively interact, mm -hmm. there was opportunity for questions. I don't know how people were giving their questions yeah. because my chat was yeah. enabled. Um, oh, really? <laughs> so I don't know how that happened, and I, I missed the opportunity. Not enough time. No, it was just totally disabled. So there was I think it was disabled. I think it was under Q and A. Okay, I so like that. another oh. setting. Yeah. So there were questions, but I thought that they did a did do a good job addressing this information. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have some more discussion about things that happened in our town. For example, the um, for example, the one that the, the development that's right next to the theater, mm -hmm. right? This big this mm -hmm. big system yes. right in this area, and I, I thought there was. I would have liked more discussion about how the the culture of community, um, the cosmetic, the wrong word, I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, but the, the aesthetics, thank you, <laughs> the aesthetics fit into the community and how that can be addressed or not addressed. Mm -hmm. But I thought they did a good job myth-busting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think it was a waste of time. I thought it was good, I just thought it was more of the time. No. Right. Well, that's probably because yeah. we are already yeah. aware. Yeah. Right. If we're already paying attention, then... Right. Yeah. Yeah. But to that point, one, one thing we talked about is having somebody on this commission kind of um, attend or stay involved with the Fairfield Senior Advocate. If anybody here is interested, right, we want somebody to kind of at least sign up for the newsletter or maybe report yeah. back here. Because yeah. yeah. they do such great work that we don't always know yeah. what they're doing. Right. Unless we ask them to come and report every month. No. Yeah. 
So I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's fair to them. But you know, yeah. if they're having meetings, then then we should be attending. You know, people who are interested should be attending. Yeah. But signing up for the newsletter is a great idea. Yeah. Do you know when they need usually? I don't. But I guess we all have to sign up for the newsletter. Right. Find out. Um, I'll need to look into it, but I'm, if it doesn't need it at the time, I can usually go. Right. So let me, I could look into yeah. it and get No, we know the guys, though, and I think there's a few girls on it, but you would be able to dial in. Oh, yeah. If you could, yeah. So right. very flexible, and I do think yeah. they probably would come every month if we wanted them to, but I don't know if there's enough information. Maybe quarterly. Yeah, maybe a month on month. Yeah, to update it. Yeah. But. That was all I had under new business. Yep. On to Julie, Department of Media. So I'll start with what Beth had mentioned before, which mm -hmm. was the ARPA funds. That, so the town is allotted um, $131,000 to spend on um, the, uh, something for the senior center. And that's what we're working on now is trying to figure out what that is. You know, we're having construction for on all the bathrooms is starting sometime this spring, so we're limited to what kind of construction-y projects we could do. So we're looking at um, security system, we're looking at an intercom system, and these are not set in stone, these are just ideas. And also design work to expand um, back to, if we ever were to get um, additional space, what that would look like, but I don't have an answer on whether or not we're doing that. So it's up in the air. We're trying to figure this out. Maybe some for programming. We might try to divvy it up to do a few things. So it's unrestricted. You can use it capital and or you, you can. You can use it for construction, for, for planning, wow. for That's programming. Unusual. It is. It's, it is control on it. Yeah, because of this committee, yeah. which is remarkable. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Great. So, no idea what we're using that for yet, but we're we're going to try to figure it out. You know, there are things that cosmetically we could do. You know, we could certainly use the paint job and and carpeting, but having the other construction happening this year um, limits the planning for that. So whether or not that would work. So. And you have to use it by a certain amount of time. I think 2026. 2026. Yeah. 2026. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's that's really yeah. And you yeah. don't have to submit the plan until June 2024. Really? So you have time to really right. think about right. it. So, so we'll, we'll know if we're Because usually yeah. it's like they can you know, like no yeah. time and you don't know, use it, lose it. Exactly. Yeah. It's not one of those shovel ready, hurry yeah. up and get this Great. done. Yeah. It is exciting. We're getting 10 million, but that's busy job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we need windows, we need a kitchen, we need all sorts of stuff. Mm. Um, Right, and right, but it, and you know, there's towns that are smaller that got less. We we right. got a good chunk of change, and a lot of towns didn't get as much. So, Julie, what's Very the great. process of deciding or prioritizing? Or just, you know, how does that happen? So we well, we have to sit down with the first select woman and, and see what kind of ideas she has and how she would like to use that. And I need uh, some questions answered as to the site and what and what the expectations are for our time here and if we're going to stay here. Um, and then, um, it, you know, it might be it might be great to have a, saw a small subcommittee to talk about with this group as to what, you know, what some ideas are. I think that would be helpful yeah, to us. Kind of yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah, sometimes I just don't have the imagination yeah, at the, the end of the day. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes when you're so close in, you know, it's right. nice to have some, yeah, some other fresh eyes. Exactly. Why don't you have food? Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. Good idea. Yeah. Right. yeah. When we're not recording, ask me about this deck on the marsh. But, <laughs> yeah. So that is that's a very Please exciting. Share. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we are in the midst of AARP tax help season, and we're also um, trying very hard to get word about out about senior and disabled tax relief. So that's a big one. Evictions and social services evictions are up, and that is. Um, that you know, hoarding is an issue with that. How people in housing rents going up, and that's been um, stressful. Mm -hmm. um, the Veterans Affairs Office, Ramon, who is our um, veterans, our region's veterans um, rep, that office is at the end of the hall and opening as of March 1st. And we'll have a ribbon cutting at some point that I'd love to invite you all to. That'll be his home base. Um, he's got another veteran services officer and his secretary there. And they'll be open our hours, the, the 9 to 4. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
That's a huge coup. I know. Holy. I know. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. He'll still have he'll, a web court office. And he'll he'll still see people yes. geographically. The yeah. whole region. He'll yeah. be traveling and his secretary will be here and he has a um now he has two people. So himself and Bianca. Awesome. It is it's great. Awesome. So neat it. Um he's so great too. People coming here as well to and Yes. I mean that's great. So uh-huh. getting to the point of getting people fifty uh under sixty five yep. to come here, this will be a is that exactly right? That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's I, I don't know if you've met him, he is, we, we're hoping to have him come to one of these meetings at some well, point. Well, he was at our, um, blue yeah. Oh, the Purple Heart, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's something. Um, I think the last thing, and I'm just clumping both departments together, the social services and the senior center. We um, participated in a town-wide emergency training for um, if, if there was a, a mass event and it was please fire us um, Elite Award came from your clergy group, schools, and that was um, helpful, terrifying, and we're starting to restart our um, behavioral health response team. And that's a great thing. That social services working with that. Brenda will be on that, and um, mm-hmm. we'll keep you updated on that. That's a really good thing for us. So working with a member of the behavioral health response team? Um, it's, so what, what the point of it is, is it's loosely based on the state of Bermuda when there's um, so if there's a if there's an event, it could be a single event that impacts just the school system. Not, I shouldn't say just like a school system, a you know a death of, of somebody, and the, the the rings that go out impact so many people. So that is a group that comes. It's regional. They they go when they go to a site. They're there for as long as they're needed, and then they help set up services that that are longer lasting. In Newtown, new the. They had a lot of um, clinicians and, and self-identified clinicians come to help, and they weren't vetted, they weren't known, they didn't know the community, um, and it was it was not helpful. So this group, we met a lot with the state about trying to organize this pre-COVID. It was a great group. It's police, fire, and the new police social worker is on it. Um, clergy, you're on there. Um, somebody from schools. Life Bridge, Positive Directions, Child Guidance. Um, I'm not missing us, uh, and I'm missing somebody else, Brenda. So what the point of it is is to have a group that knows each other. So if something happens and we are opening a family assistance center, or a reunification center, and we have a great building for it, we would be that emergency site because we have two ends of the building depending on on the level of um, depending on what happens whether it's, you know, identifying people or not. But the benefit is that we will know everybody, and that's our task is to make sure that if, if Red Cross and, and the state aren't here or they're leaving, we have a system in place to help and, and that we would be there. So that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying and great at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is it for now. Oh, no, no, it's not it. We are about ready. We are waiting for our letter from the first select woman to apply for the um, age-friendly status, and that okay. once that's submitted, then we're then we're on our way. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's it. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I appreciate everyone's time and coming in person, and um, Beth, especially for you, sticking around for the rest of our Good, Thank you. Thank I'm you. a resident, so I'm interested. <laughs> and our next meeting is Thursday, March 23rd, here at 4 p.m., and I will forward the recording to all of you, and if there's no further questions, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I need to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye.